JBN, we keep you informed. Coming up in the news today, three killed in Duane Park shooting incidents. All for a party. Pay back tax or face the consequences, police issue warning. Westmoreland woman found guilty of assaulting police officer. Victim of $120 million Mobe auto parts fire devastated. Man beheaded, another shot dead in Central Village. 24 JCF members promoted. And Kemoy Campbell rushed to hospital after collapsing at Milrose Games. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Three killed in two Duane Park shooting incidents. Three people, including a woman, were shot dead in two separate incidents in Duane Park, Kingston 20, on Friday night. According to police reports, 34-year-old Craig Murray, a mason of Brook Valley, and Pauline Burke Fraser, otherwise called Judith, a vendor of Boris Avenue was standing along a roadway in Brook Valley about 9.20 p.m. when they were attacked and shot by armed men traveling in a motor car. The police were alerted and they were taken to the hospital where Murray and Burke Fraser were pronounced dead, while a third person, a male, was admitted for treatment. In the second incident, 22-year-old Kevin Hines, otherwise called Muscle, an electrician of Annadale Avenue, and two other men were unloading electronic items from a motor truck about 10.20 p.m. when they were pounced on by three armed men. The men proceeded to rob the men of the electronic devices along with cash and then shot Hines. He was pronounced dead at hospital while the other two men escaped unhurt. All for a patty. A woman who couldn't get a beef patty at a favorite New York eatery used a baseball bat in protest. Yesterday, police released surveillance video of the woman in action in the Bronx smashing a restaurant's windows after learning the eatery had run out of her favorite food. Police said the woman at the back home restaurant in the Mauriciana neighborhood came in on January 15 and ordered a patty. She was told they had run out and she got upset. Authorities said she left and came back to the Jamaican restaurant with the bat. The video shows the woman bashing in two windows. Pay back or tax or face the consequences, police issue warning. Come March 1, it will not be business as usual for the over 500 vendors operating in Clarendon Southeast. The strong warning was given by Zone Commander South, Detective Sergeant Paul Bernard, at a proactive violence interruption strategy community forum held at A's New Testament Church of God. The meeting was the culmination of a walkthrough of the communities involving the police and the Northern Caribbean University behavioral and social sciences students. You must pay back our tax. If this little country Jamaica was collecting 70% what it do to collect, Jamaica would be the best place in the world to live, Bernard said. He told the gathering that the time had come for the businesses to be regularized and stop serving on the counter. People here, please take the message to your counterparts who have these little places called shops and not even have one ounce of running water but a sell food. It won't be business as usual. Cause come March 1, the courthouse are got full if you don't regularize an operation, was the strong warning coming from him. And the cops' radar will be the unregistered barbers, hairdressers, drink centers, car wash, and those who have been illegally thiefing the electricity. Bernard said a collaboration has been formed with the Jamaica Public Service and the Clarendon Health Department in the operation, which is expected to kick off the 1st of next month. People's National Party caretaker, Patricia Duncan Sutherland, who was at the meeting, cautioned Bernard about his stance, noting that it should be done in partnership and not a war, as persons who are running the shops or are jerking or are doing it because they have no other jobs. Nobody grow up and say, I want to do is jerk chicken or be a shopkeeper. Nobody ever say, I want to open an illegal shop. That is not their desire. Anybody doing it is out of necessity, she said, as she warned that the move could bring about more goat thieves. I agree with law and order, but I agree with a partnership to regularize, she said, suggesting that there should be a period of education partnership before the enforcement. Walk with people from hard trust, safety division, go with health officers, carry the forms, explain the process, she said. Westmoreland woman found guilty of assaulting police officer. A Westmoreland businesswoman who pleaded guilty 
to several charges, including assaulting a police officer, was on Thursday fined $92,000 or 21 days imprisonment in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court. Nicole Powell, 33, of White House, was also charged with operating an unlicensed motor car, having no fitness certificate, resisting arrest, using indecent language, malicious destruction of property, and assault occasioning bodily harm. The court was told that Ms. Paul was driving her car along Main Street in Santa Cruz about 2 p.m. on Tuesday when she was stopped by the police. During a check of her car documents, it was discovered that the vehicle was not licensed and the fitness certificate had expired. The vehicle was seized. Ms. Paul reportedly became enraged, destroying the police ticket book and biting a policeman on the arm. In court, Ms. Paul apologized to the police and the court for her behavior. Victim of $120 million Mobay Auto Parts fire devastated. Businessman Edgar John John Johnson is still reeling from the Jamaica $120 million fire that destroyed his used auto parts business on Hart Street in Montego Bay on Wednesday night. It has left me wounded, crippled, and astonished. I just don't know where to start. Don't know where to start, muttered Johnson. As he stared at the burnt out remains of the building, it's not all about the money, but about my love for the business, which is now totally gone. The parts retailer said that he was especially concerned that the small man out there, like the poor taxi operators, the drivers and mechanics with the old vehicles, who depend on me on a daily basis to use parts, might have to source pricier alternatives elsewhere. Johnson was operated John John Auto Part from Hart Street for more than 10 years, had just completed a new building located in proximity of the destroyed premises and was in the process of moving shop at the time of the fire. With the new building, we were looking forward to expanding operations. So as you can imagine, this fire is a big setback, said Johnson. As I said before, I honestly don't know where to start to put this business back together. According to reports, about 11 p.m. on Wednesday, Residents living along Hart Street observed the fire inside the building and raised an alarm. The blaze quickly spread to a nearby tenement where several board houses were also destroyed. The St. James Fire Department responded to the fire with three units and an ambulance. 27 firefighters battled the flames for four hours, but only managed to save the neighboring Watts Meat Shop which had also caught fire. Several persons from the neighboring tenement yard lost their homes and all their belongings said District Officer O'Neill Kerr, who heads the St. James Fire Department. In terms of monetary loss, the greatest loss was to John John Otto, which was completely destroyed. Man beheaded, another shot dead in Central Village. The Jamaica Constabulary Force said its officers are probing the murder of two men at Zambia District in Central Village, St. Catherine. It stated that in the first incident, shortly after 11 o'clock Friday evening, February 8th, a team of officers responded to calls from residents who reported hearing gunshots. The team found the body of a man with gunshot wounds lying on a refrigerator at a shop on Wellington Drive in the community, the JCF said, adding that the body is unidentified. The body, which is unidentified, has bleached skin and appears to be in its 30s. It was clad in a pink marina, blue jeans and a pair of black slippers. The JCF in the meanwhile disclosed that his officers were again called to the community shortly after 7 o'clock yesterday morning after residents reported that a human head was seen along Mandela Highway in the parish. The police team that responded found the head of a man along the highway. Further investigation revealed the headless body of a man on the banks of a canal in the community. The body is unidentified. It was clad in a blue polo t-shirt with a white merino, gray jeans and white Reebok sneakers, the JCF added. It said investigations are ongoing. 24 JCF members promoted. 24 members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF have been promoted, four of them to the rank of Assistant Commissioner of Police. The four promoted to Assistant Commissioner are Calvin Allen, Head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, MacArthur Sutherland, the man in charge of the constabulary's investigative machinery, Clinton Lang of the Inspectorate of the Constabulary, and Gary Griffiths of Area 5 Headquarters, head of the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sissoka, Sherman Chand and Glenford Miller of the St. Andrew North Division were promoted to senior superintendent. Nine JCF members were promoted to the rank of superintendent, and eight sergeants were promoted to the rank of inspector. 
German Anglin, crime officer for the Carindon Division, was the sole inspector promoted to the rank of Deputy Superintendent of Police. Commissioner of Police Major Anthony Anderson offered congratulations to all the officers. Kemoy Campbell rushed to hospital after collapsing at Millrose Games. Jamaica's leading distance runner Kemoy Campbell was rushed to hospital after collapsing while competing at the Millrose Games in New York on Saturday. Campbell looked very disoriented while performing his duty as a pace setter during the men's 3,000 meter race. He collapsed near the shot put area and did not immediately respond to contact from nearby personnel. Police and paramedics soon arrived and reportedly had to use a defibrillator on his unconscious body. The 28-year-old was revived and taken to a nearby hospital, but no official word on his condition has been made. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.